Hello, my name is Bob Warner. I'm from the Crawford School of Public Policy and I work on the school's new journal, Asia and the Pacific Policy Studies, and also with its associated society, Asia and the Pacific Policy Society. This is a um, multidisciplinary, peer-reviewed, open access journal that tries to generate uh, policy debate and make contributions to policy throughout the Asia and the Pacific region. Uh, a little bit earlier today, uh, we were really fortunate to have Haro Acuna uh, giving a presentation about some work that he's been doing in Vietnam over the last five or six years, examining citizens' perceptions of the governance and administration performance of provincial governments in, in Vietnam. Haro, welcome to the Crawford School. Thank you very much, Bob. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, we're really pleased that you're able to come and give a presentation uh, this afternoon and also to talk to us now. Um, first of all, it would be interesting if you could give us some introduction to, to, to this index that you've been working on, which I understand has taken up quite a bit of your time over the last few years. Sure. I mean, um, basically what we are trying to do, Bob, is to, as, as you mentioned in the introduction, try to understand what are Vietnamese citizens' experiences when they interact with, uh, with local authorities. Um, the index itself, it's called the Vietnam Provincial Governance and Public Administration Performance Index. Quite a long name, um, I know, but uh, it, it, it basically is, is, is a pioneering tool in the country that asks ordinary citizens um, how are their interactions with the local authorities. Right? Uh, for example, if they have to apply for a land use right certificate, right? how was that experience? Uh, if they have children in the school, right? you know, um, um, how, what are the levels of satisfaction that they have uh, with the public primary schools? If a relative falls sick and has to go to the district public hospital, what is the experience right? uh, of that, uh, of that uh, healthcare uh, system? And we are trying to collect all that information evenly across all 63 provinces in the country. 63 provinces, that's, a, that's quite a big task, isn't it? Um, it is. Can I ask why you focus that assessment on provincial, local governments? Yeah, well, uh, basically what, what I think that we have come to the conclusion is that, you know, is, is at the local levels where, where the Vietnamese citizens have the closest interactions um, uh, with the authorities. In the case of Vietnam, even though it's, it's, it's a one-party centralized political system, um, there is um, you know, an, an, an unofficial informal decentralization and, and provision of public services uh, happening. Um, as you know, Vietnam is a, is a very long country, right? More than 3,000 mm. kilometers from the north uh, to the south. And you know, all these 63 provinces you know, provide you know, a, you know, a wide range of uh, um, uh, different uh, quality of services mm. uh, from, the, uh, from the public sector. And Vietnam has 90 million citizens spread mm. across 63 provinces. Um, the average size of the province in Vietnam is around 2 million citizens, mm. right? Um, mm. So small mm. units. So we are, you know, what we are trying to do is you know, to, to feed back that information back uh, to the center to understand you know, what are the issues of performance and you know, on which provinces uh, need to improve, but also identify good practices. Mm. Right, and then hopefully translate those good practices from uh, from from one province um, um, to another one. Okay. Now, as I understand it, the index measures performance across six key dimensions. Do, do you want to tell us a bit about those dimensions yeah. and why you thought they were important? Yeah, um, the six dimensions that we that we um, measure are dimensions that relate to the Vietnamese own rules and regulations. Right. So it's an index that is that is endogenous. To, to the governance um, uh, aspects of, of the country. Um, and they are not based on predetermined conceptions of what is okay. good governance, of what is public administration. Even though the names of those dimensions are very much standard, right? Uh, participation, dimension number one. Dimension number two is about transparency. And number three, vertical accountability for control of corruption, both in the public service but also in the public administrative um, areas. Uh, fifth, public administrative procedures. And, and dimension number six is about um, public service delivery. So in total is, is six dimensions. Each dimension has three or four sub-dimensions. 
each subdimension has three or four different indicators. So at the end of the day, PAP itself is an aggregation of six dimensions, 22 subdimensions, 92 different uh, indicators. So you know, it gives you an, a wide array of, you know, of different aspects of, of service delivery. Okay. And what kind of results? You've, you've been running the survey now for five years? We, we have been done this since 2009, okay. where we started in, as a small pilot, right? Um, initially, you know, there was a lot of questions, you know, in terms of you know, how an exercise like this, you know, can be uh, implemented uh, in the country. So we, we tried to follow the very Vietnamese way of piloting mm -hmm. uh, things in small scale, yeah. right? And then scale up and mm -hmm. replicate, innovate to, to other provinces. So we started in 2009 with three provinces. Um, to test the methodology, uh, to test the questions, right, uh, and, and the issues, you know, that could be um, asked. Um, in, based on the results, um, there was a decision made that we were going to expand it, but not to all 63 provinces, mm -hmm. but to half of the country, 30. So we, in 2010, um, we replicated, we improved the methodology. From 2011 onwards, you know, has been done systematically across all 63 provinces on a yearly basis. So it's an annual monitoring tool. Um, in terms of the results, what it, what it, what, what, what the information is telling us is identifying with some level of precision. Uh, first of all, which provinces are doing better? in each one of these sub-dimensions, not only, you know, the dimension aspects, um, but also um, by exploring the data itself, trying to determine um, what makes a Vietnamese citizen to say, yes, I'm satisfied with a particular mm -hmm. service or with a, or, uh, with a particular mm -hmm. uh, procedure. Um, and then use that information to go back to the provincial government and design strategies for them, you know, to improve um, that performance. So it's not just a scorecard, you actually are interrogating the dimensions or the drivers of satisfaction. So you're yeah. actually able to go back to provincial authorities or other people who are interested and say, this is what the people are telling us are the reasons why they are or are not satisfied. Yes, exactly. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the visible objective of the exercise is the scorecard, mm. right? To say this province is doing better than these other mm. provinces, but also, you know, when you have 63 provinces with so diverse characteristics mm -hmm. in terms of wealth, in terms of population, in terms of levels of urbanization, right, it doesn't make much sense, you know, to compare, you know, province number mm -hmm. one with province number 23 mm -hmm. or province number 64, right? Uh, but, you know, try to understand, you know, what are the dynamics, yeah. right, in those provinces. One of the things that we, that we seem to be noticing from that, from that, from that exercise of, of extrapolating that data, Bob, is that, um, that we can challenge conventional wisdom in the country about service delivery uh, from, uh, from the public sector. Uh, and let me just give you a very quick example, right? The traditional wisdom will tell that uh, the quality of the service will vary according to the province where you are right. performing yeah. that service, yeah. right? So if you are in this province, you are bound to have a better service mm -hmm. than this other province, right? And we wanted to, 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 you know, to understand that uh, hypothesis. And we looked at the data, and what we found is that 73% of the variation of the experiences uh, by the ordinary citizens is by the individual characteristics of the respondent, no. okay. not necessarily the location, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, um, things like, for example, men experience better governance than women keen citizens, which is the majority of, of, of ethnicity, uh, experience substantial better services than ethnic minority uh, groups. The professional, the wealthy also mm -hmm. tend to, to have more positive um, um, experiences, right? So that, you know, that says a lot in terms of, you know, providing clues to the authorities that, you know, there is not a fatalistic mm -hmm. Right, vision that, you know, according to this province, you know, you are doomed to have a poor quality of services, right? Um, try to understand those dynamics and, you know, tweak all, you know, the, the, the policy implementation uh, aspects. So geography is not necessarily destiny? 
I, yeah, I don't think so, right? And also, mm. yeah, I mean, and, and, and not necessarily rich provinces mm. do better, right? Okay, and uh, yeah. one thing that, you know, also uh, Papi is pioneering uh, in Vietnam is the mapping aspects of governance. You know, we, as I mentioned in, 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 the, in the lecture, Bob, um, one traditionally sees maps of Vietnam of, you know, poverty levels, vulnerability to climate change, uh, but not about governance, mm. right? Um, and thanks to, you know, to, 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 to this scorecard type of exercise, we can map which provinces, you know, are doing better than others. And what we can find very quickly, right, is that is, 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 is the poorer provinces that are outperforming the richer provinces, right, in terms of, of overall governance satisfaction. It might be very well, you know, uh, because of, of, you know, of levels of expectations mm. that citizens yeah. have, yeah. right, in, 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 in richer, mm. more educated mm. uh, provinces. But, you know, it's, it's, it's also challenging the modernization theory type mm. of approach, right, that, you know, you will have good governance or good service delivery once you have reached certain thresholds of, of wealth. Right. Do, do you have any tentative explanations of why you've overthrown the conventional wisdom? Are there any reasons why you do get that, that disparity? Um, well, I think that um, um, what has happened is that that conventional wisdom was never really um, tested um, empirically, mm. right? And it was all based on you know, traditional low income type of policy making processes, mm. right? And now Vietnam has made this transition to middle income country. And with that, you know, more data and more evidence, you know, is being put into, into, uh, uh, into the table of discussion mm. uh, on policies. So I think that that's why, you know, all these traditional wisdom were, um, uh, were seen as fait accompli, so mm. to speak, right? Everybody assumed them. But it was, they, they were never really empirically proved or, you know, uh, um, uh, disaggregated, uh, analyzed, right? And I, I also think, Bob, you know, that we are at the infancy, mm. right? You know, we are only started, you know, this exercise, even though um, something that I should have mentioned earlier, right, is the largest governance survey that we have mm. in the country. Over these five, past five years, uh, we have interviewed nearly 50,000 Vietnamese citizens, right? Every year since we started nationwide implementation, we collect almost 14,000 uh, responses. So we have a wealth of data yeah. that, you know, that needs to be explored, needs, you know, needs to be uh, uh, um, um, analyzed, you know, with that, with that lens of the transition from low income, policy making, lack of evidence, uh, um, development stage, mm -hmm to a middle income or low middle income in which evidence based policy making uh, you know is, is becoming more important yes. and you know and why is that right in middle income Vietnamese citizens are more educated are healthier mm -hmm. right are wealthier than a generation ago they are also looking for a different type of uh, provision of public services right and and and, and Papi helps in that in that regard, you know, to put that information uh, open for discussion. Okay, so it's it's one thing to have a tool that, that monitors and provides a measure of performance, but the, the real test of anything like that is how it's used, you know, yes. its actual impact on how things might change. Can you tell us a little bit about how Papi interacts with the way in which the government and yeah. other people try and change yeah. things? Yeah, well, I think that at that um, for that, we have a three, three levels of, of analysis on how, how the information uh, is used. Um, and, you know, to our surprise, you know, we have had a very good open um, reception, you know, to this type of data. Especially when you iterate, mm -hmm. right, the exercise on an, on an, on an annual basis. Um, the first level is at the national level, right? How did the authorities in Hanoi, mm -hmm. you know, using the information? The government inspectorate that is in charge of the administrative uh, oversight functions, they have to report every year to the National Assembly. They use our data to report on the issue of corruption, mm -hmm. for example. Um, the Ministry of Home Affairs, 
right, also uh, has been using you know, our methodology to design their own public administration reform index monitoring system. Um, we have had extensive discussions with the Ministry of Justice on their administrative procedure control agency that tries to understand you know, all these issues of, of um, so this is the first level. Right, at, at, at the central level, and then we see that there is some, you know, a, a significant uh, use uh, for policymakers. Second level is at the provincial level, right? At the end of the day, this is a provincial exercise, mm. right? And we want provinces to start using yeah. that. Initially, um, the first the first year, not much use, um, so to speak. I think that you know um, there was some some sort of resistance from 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 the authorities, and also lack of awareness of knowledge, mm. right? Um, but over the year, we have more and more provinces looking at the data, analyzing informally first. But the last count that we did um, two weeks ago is that approximately 13 provinces have officially issued some sort of response to the results for their province. Mm -hmm. um, either um, an action plan, a decision, or an instruction from the Provincial People's Committee or from the Provincial People's Councils saying we have looked at the data, we have analyzed the results, uh, here are the weaknesses mm. coming from this data, and here are the steps that we are going to do to improve the performance. And that's the second mm. level. And the third level, Bob, is the, uh, uh, the academic community, mm. uh, the research community. Right? Uh, this data is made publicly available for free. Right? Mm. And uh, we think that this is a gold mine uh, mm -hmm. for research. Uh, media has been reporting using that information to, uh, um, um, to, to write stories about governance and public administration. Um, academics from within Vietnam, but also from, mm -hmm. from outside of Vietnam, you know, have looked at the data and have published uh, peer review mm -hmm. articles uh, using you know, this uh, information, mm -hmm. right? So you know, we think that you know, we, um, we have we have managed to you know over time to increase you know the use and the impact of this type of information. Okay. Now, at the, at the outset, when you you were describing the the uh, the project, you you made reference to the fact that Vietnam is a single party state, and I think many people would be surprised that a single party state would not only allow but embrace a process which is all about people offering criticisms of, yes. of how the state and the party are doing. Can you tell us a little bit why, why you think you've been successful in uh, avoiding that trap? Well, you know, yes, of course, you know, Vietnam is a one-party state, but that doesn't mean that they are not interested in providing good services, right? And, you know, making sure that uh, uh, the large majority of the population, you know, has, you know, higher levels of satisfaction with, uh, with service delivery, right? And the, at, from that angle, I think that, you know, uh, that's how, why the system uh, uh, has been receptive uh, to, this, uh, to this exercise. But also the partners that we have, mm -hmm. you know, I think that, you know, are, are important. Um, we have partner, yes, it's true, with a very small NGO the called uh, SECORES, the Center for Community Support and Development Studies. Uh, but in, 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 in some sort of consortium format with the largest mass socio-political organization in the country, mm. the Vietnam Fatherland Front, mm. that has a representation from the Politburo, Central Committee, Provincial Level, District, Commune, Village in the country, mm. right? And it's through this partnership with the Fatherland Front that uh, uh, this, uh, this exercise has been able to be implemented, mm. you know, across um, um, across the country, um, and and yes, you know, I think that you know there there is a genuine interest, right, to to make sure that you know as Vietnam progresses economically, right, the benefits of that growth are also um, distributed equally mm. in other aspects of governance and public administration. So, Hari, you said that uh, people can access the information. Can you tell us where they go to to get the, the data from, from these five years of, of studies? Yeah, that's correct. You know, we have created a website, which mm. is the most traditional and easiest yeah. you know, uh, way to do that. The address is www.papi.vn. 
Okay, well, thank you very much for coming and talking to us today and for particularly for giving us this interview this thank afternoon. You. My pleasure.